that we hope you enjoy worshiping with us today. Sometimes on this journey I get lost in my mistakes What looks to me like weakness is a grandma's holy strength My story isn't over My story's just begun Yeah, yeah, love is 
The song was in the Father's house, and I'm excited to be here this morning in the Father's house. There's no other place that any of us would like to be, even if you're sitting at home in front of your TV or in front of your computer, you're still in the Father's house because you're in his presence. Um, there's a few announcements and prayer requests from First Church. Uh, Pat Rose had knee surgery, so we will continue to pray for her. Holly Bias. Um, I think that was unspoken. And let's remember Bob, Bob Keyes is in the hospital in Cabo, Cabo Huntington um, and their family, the family of Cecil Eckerts, and, which is a friend of Patty Bumpus that passed away from COVID. And let's also remember Kat, Kathleen Sherman and we will pray for that situation after the songs. But there's a few more in announcements. Um, your brown bags can be dropped off today. From 10:30 to from 10 o'clock to 11:30, or from 5:30 to 7, leave them outside of the kitchen door. And Pastor Randy said, "Please do not enter the building. Someone will carry them inside. My sons will be outside at that time to help you guys. Um, whoever brings the stuff in. Uh, also, from Pastor Randy, since we are meeting online this week, tithes can be given through our website, www.elkrivernas.com, giving with a mobile app." through the mail or drop off at the church office on Monday before 3 p.m. Um, text, text giving is also available and that number is 304-381-6100. Uh, also there will be no men's breakfast uh, next Saturday that has been canceled. We will get um, a date for that soon. Before they come up and sing, we want to have a moment of silence for the veterans. So let's just take a moment and bow our heads at home and here and just thank God for their service and the things that they've done. And we want to honor them at this quiet moment. Again, we are thankful for their service and uh, the, the, the freedom that, that, that they're fighting for for us. So the worshipers are going to come, and then afterwards we'll, we will have, we'll have prayer.
let's uh, slow it down for a moment and take this opportunity to remember the prayer request that was stated earlier. <clears throat> and uh, those of you who are at home, uh, take a moment and grab your family member and tell them you love them. And this moment, you and your family come together and have prayer with us. And just pray for God's protection over your family. Men, grab your wives, grab your kids, cover them in prayer, talk to them, uh, and let them know that you're with them through this moment. Everyone who is at home, let's bow our heads. Father, thank you for this opportunity to be in your house. Thank you, God, for loving us and caring for us. Lord, you're so good to us. Lord, it looks a hot mess outside, but Lord, in here right now, your presence is, is felt. Lord, we're living in some, some crazy, crazy times. But Lord, nothing takes you off guard. Before this world, Lord, was created, you were there. You knew our pains. You knew our suffering. You knew who we were, Lord, before we were formed in our mother's womb. But Lord, this has been a trying week for some of us, God. This has been a week that some of us would like to put to bed and never come back. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we can come to you and bring our burdens and our situations and our problems and our cares, Lord, and all the things, Lord, we can put them on your back. We can put them on your shoulders. You can carry this, God. Lord, we have a number of, of people close to us, God, that are sick with this, this just nastiness, God, that's going around. And Lord, we, we lift them and, your, and their families up to you, God, knowing that you have them in your, in your care. Some of them are in hospital beds right now, God, where it's lonely, where families aren't allowed to visit. But I pray, God, that you knock on the door and that you introduce yourself to them as Christ our Lord. And let them know, God, that you're right beside of them at this moment. Let them know, God, that you're not going to leave their side. Let them know, God, that you are still the God of healing. And that, God, again, that nothing takes you by surprise. You're always on our case, no matter what the enemy tries to throw at us. Our worship and praise this morning, Lord, is for you. Be with each person, Lord, the family members, the uncertainty, the things, Lord, that they're going through right now, God. Some things are just unbelievable. But, Lord, we know where to take our problems to. Lord, I pray that you bless the rest of the service, God. Be with us, Lord. Allow a song or a word from you this morning to touch those who are sitting at home. Lord, we need some comfort. Lord, we need to know that you're still with us. And we thank you, God, that you're on our case and that you're on our side. Lord, we invite you in this morning, Lord. Come dwell with us. Come dwell. Come dwell in our tabernacles, God. Come, Holy Spirit, this morning. We want to see your face. We want to touch your hands. We want you to touch us. Lord, we're sick of the pain. We're sick of everything that's going on now, God, but we have to carry on. In your word, Lord, you said there'll be days like this. So give us the strength to push through. Only you can do that. 
We thank you, God, so much for all that you do. Accept our worship this morning, Lord. May it be a sweet smell in your nose. Thank you, God, for all that you do. In Jesus' name, Lord, we give you praise. Amen. Aren't you thankful for his great love for us today? I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the thankful that through everything that's going on in the world today we have the ability to live and thrive in the goodness of God and I think today as we think about those who are dealing with illness and um, trials in their lives that it's such a good reminder to know that regardless of what's going on in this world he is holding us in his hand and he has the ability to protect us and give us guidance through all of this
it's running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. It's running after me. And I 
I couldn't hurt it And I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away And oh, the overwhelming Never-ending, reckless love of God Yeah No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Yeah. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you Coming after me, oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. And I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. And all the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God, yeah. The reckless love of God. This morning, um, you know, all of our hearts are heavy with, with certain things, and certain things are going on in our lives that are just um, unexplainable. But there's one thing that we can explain with how we live, and that's the love of God. So before we jump into the message this morning, um, those at home and those few that are here, um, turn to your Bibles, Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 16. And I'll be reading from the King James Version, which you know that's God, because... uh, I struggle with the King James, so when the Lord said get this book out, I had to get it out. Um, Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 16. So if you have a different version, it's going to read a little bit different than, uh, than what you're normally used to. But verse 9, the Apostle Paul said, Let, there, let love be without dissimulation. Auber, what, auber that which is evil, cleave to that which is good, Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another, not in slothful, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of the saints, given to responsibility. Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one towards another. Mind not high things, but with all 
conceit to the low, the low state. Be not wise in your own conscience. Um, if, if I had to entitle this message, it would be, this is no ordinary love. This is no ordinary love. And um, this, is, this sermon was birthed through prayer and through time spent with God. But there was a lady that I talked to this week in the hospital that really encouraged me, but also allowed me to see and to understand what's going on in the lives of people. I, by, you know, by profession, other than being a pastor, I get to be a nursing assistant, which I would do that job for free if I could feed my family. I just enjoy the time with people. I enjoy that bond that you make with people and the love of God that you get to show those in those positions. But Saturday morning, I was walking into a room with a 90-year-old lady who was asleep, and I woke her up to do her blood, do her, do her blood pressure. And she's very kind, very, uh, she stuck her arm out, but yet she was still sleepy, and uh, there were very few words said. But the danger of waking a, a 90-year-old woman up in the middle at 7 o'clock in the morning, and then she sees me hovering over, I'm lucky I, didn't, I, I, I'm lucky I got a smile. She could have put her hands up and swung at me or uh, screamed and yelled, but I was thankful that she was very receptive that I was in the room. Because if I was in that position, you know, telling what I would do at 7 o'clock, somebody hovering over me, waking me up, it would be ugly. But let, later on, as I began to talk to her, this, this lady's um, daughter came, came in. And when she came in the room, Somehow, some way, we begin to talk about COVID, we begin to talk about Jesus, and we begin to talk about how we make it through this situation. And I had to remind her that this is nothing new to God. That God has been God and he's been powerful since before we have even existed. She said, but what, what, what about the days when I don't want to go on? What about the days when things are hard? What about the days when... I lose my faith and things just look bleak and look like they're not going to come to action. So I reminded her of the story of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. I reminded her of the story when God's son at that moment was over, overthrown with problems. He had the world on his shoulders. He was getting ready to be immersed in every sin that's ever been created in this world on that cross in that moment. And at that moment, God said, God's son said, I don't think I want to do this. And we all know the story. As he goes on, he ends up saying that it's not my will, but my father's will. So I reminded this lady who was crying at this moment I said, there's moments where you have to go in your room and shut the door and just scream and tell God everything that's going on. And as I was telling her that, I had to remind her that, saints, we must be real with God about all of our problems. Don't take your fancy rhetoric and your fancy words to God. Be real with him. Lay them down. We sing songs that say, lay your burdens down. We sing songs that say we're going to take everything to the cross of Jesus. And I admit there's a respect that we have when we come to God, but also he wants every single thing that you have. What God's going to say this morning is birthed out of someone that's been through a week spiritually that I cannot explain. God said there's a word for my people that they have to hear during this time, and they have to hear it. Hearing doesn't mean just simply hearing it, go home, oh, it was a good message, good job. It means doing this, allowing this love that we're going to talk about to penetrate your heart, and then we go forward. Because it's not new policies, it's not new laws, it's not new government that's going to change this society and this world. It's the people that are normally in this building. It's the people that are called Christ his own. It's the people that are called by his name. We have a responsibility. 
When we get there, God's not going to say, oh, it was just not enough policies passed. That's why we didn't get it. No, he's going to look at us and say, what did you do? What situation did I put you in to love and to change lives? What did I do? What did you do for me? What did you do with the gifts that I gave you? What did you do with the talents that I gave you? What did you do with what I gave you? Well, Lord, I was scared. I buried them. I did not want to bring them out. On that day, we're not going to have any excuses. There's a dying world that depends on his word living in us and it manifests out when we're out and about. Needless to say, after we talked a little bit, I grabbed this lady's hand and prayed. And as she's praying, I, I, could, I, could, I, I looked at her and you could see the relief coming because she had to be reminded that God is still on the throne and that his promises are still Yes, and his promises are still eternal, and that if he said it, he's going to do it. So as we dive into this, remember that God's love is not ordinary. It's not like the love that we give one another. Thank God for that. Because I'm just as guilty. I don't, sometimes I don't want somebody to love me like I love people sometimes. <laughs> I can admit that. I'm thankful that God's love surpasses all of our understanding, that surpasses anything, Brother Jack, that I could ever talk about. That God's word is so big and so complex and his love fits right into that. Do we do it justice by talking about it? I think a little, but one day we will see it for what it truly is. On that day, so the first thing we need to remember about how God's love is not ordinary is we must remember that love must be genuine. We must love from the center of who we are. We cannot fake this. The core of your being should be rooted, marinated in Christ alone. It's like when you stick your favorite meat in a marinade, you let it sit overnight. That's the time, that's how we should spend time with God to where when we come out, <laughs> the smell and the flavor that God puts on us will be undeniable. As I was praying, God told me, you cannot be a Christ follower absent of love. We cannot say that we love Jesus and that love not be the very banner that we preach and teach more that we live. The love of God will go the extra mile. The love of God will go 10 miles when they only want to go one. The love, the, the love of God says, I love you despite of all your imperfections. The love of God said, one day I have to send my son Jesus Christ down to die for a wretched man like me. And saints, I do not think we, we will understand the true value of love until we realize how wretched we really were. Until you realize what, what the muck and the mire and God brought you from, how are we going to love others when we don't realize how much we're loved? It's impossible. Our love must be genuine. We cannot be Christ followers absent of love. So our love must be genuine. Hold that in your hearts. The second is love must dis display tender affection. Listen to this story right here. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell off Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was, and was baptized after taking food and regained his strength. Let's go back to the story of the Apostle Paul, the one who penned this scripture, excuse me, the text scripture in the book of Romans. Let's think about, the, let's think about Ananias for a minute who received persecution from Paul, who watched Paul do some horrible things to people. And then all of a sudden, God speaks to Ananias and says, Ananias, I want you to go lay hands on Paul. 
Yes, Lord, I'll be glad to. That would be my response. Because when I lay my hands on Paul, I'm not going to stop, Lord. We have to be real for a moment. Put yourself in that situation. You just watch Paul run reckless. And all of a sudden, you want me to go touch him, Lord? Oh, yes. This is not in the NIV. This is not in the King James. This is in the Robert version of the Bible. Because I think we have to be real for a moment that when Lord says go lay hands on somebody, immediately we have to pray and say, Lord, which hands? The holy hands or the, or the dirty hands? What, what, what you want me to do? Let's just be real for a moment. He just watched Paul do some, do some horrible things and then you want me to go lay my hands on him so he can receive the Holy Spirit? Lord, he's not worthy. Look at what he did. But Ananias put his belief aside, and what he wanted, well, I ain't going to say that's what Ananias wanted to do. I'm just saying that's what I, anyway. Um, Ananias put his own self aside and said, I'm going to be obedient to what the Lord says. So he went and touched Paul, and, and, and immediately something fell off Paul like scales, like scales from Paul's eyes, and he could see again. Imagine what had to be going through Ananias' heart at that moment, a change. Lord, you want me to go do something? You want this man to see your love? You want this man to see how much you care for him? But Lord, look at what he's done. God said, I've already forgiven him. He has a work for me. Go allow him to receive what's going to carry him through country and country and through town after town and the souls that he's going to win. Saints, we don't realize what our love can do for the next person and the person after that. Every time I encounter somebody, I say, Lord, let this be something that they carry to their family. And whatever happens, this guy started talking to me about Jesus. And the next thing you know, I got excited. And then this happened. Let it be a spark that turns into a wildfire. Because like I said earlier, saints, the only thing that's going to save this world is the love and the grace of God. And how can it be seen? Only through us. We have a tall burden to bear, but we also have one that is there for us to relieve our burden when we get tired. When we get tired of hearing about COVID and we get tired of hearing about sickness and we get tired of hearing about people in the hospital in this government situation and that government situation, when all this is going on, I still look up and say, God is still on the throne and he still has all of this in control and there's nothing too big that my God cannot conquer. If he, if he resurrected Jesus from the grave, guess what? He's going to resurrect this situation and we're going to get through this. Don't stop believing. You put me in a room and tell me to quarantine for 14 days, I'm coming out the door looking like the Hulk. Because I have time to be with God. I have time to study a scripture. When you can find me and give me a moment where it's nothing but me and God, when we walk out of the building, yes, the enemy should be scared. Yes, love should be on display. So I love, so we must display tender affection. The next thing is our love must be enthusiastic. Now, this is the important one. I want you guys to hear this. Our love must be enthusiastic. I'm beginning, the longer and longer I, I, I serve God and I worship God and I read and I hang around his people and I fellowship, I understand that the love of God affects people a lot different. I've seen people that hold the pew because they feel like they're going to launch up in the sky because of God's love. I've seen grandmas that came in with a cane, all of a sudden can run the aisles under the power of God and the love of God. I've seen people that have walked into church with a limp, leave the church walking upright and straight. And I have personally seen a God's love who transformed my life into something that is just simply amazing. So I do understand why people have these different emotions and things happen when the love of God is in us. Some people just let it go. Just let God be God through you. Don't hold back. If some of you are sitting at home right now, you feel like running, run out the door. Scare the neighbors. Because we're living in times where what we have must be seen. It must be noticed. 
The heaviness that I have felt this week has been a heaviness like, a, like the entire world is in, my, is in my chest. And I don't understand what God's doing. God, I can't do anything. Craig? And all I ask God is, what do you want me to do to relieve this heaviness? He says, I'm letting you feel what I feel. And all I could do is just sit there and stare. God, this hurts. And then he reminds me that my love and my grace will destroy any falsehood that tries to come your way. So if you ever want to know how God feels, he will let you, let you just give you, I know I didn't feel the full glimpse of it, but good gracious, it's been a heaviness. Something I can't explain. So I love must be enthusiastic. In the King James Version, it says, do not be slothful in zeal, but be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord in verse, it says it in verse 11. And I'm not sure if I have the, it's not? Okay. There's a meme I want to put up here. And this usually gets us excited when this right here would happen. If it don't come up, it's okay. But anyway, if the meme don't come up, the meme was something that said that it was a little girl that had a ticket in her hand. And the, and the ticket was a winning, lo winning lottery ticket. And this little girl was hightailing herself to the, to the place where you turn it in to get your money. You know what? If someone handed you, here it is, when you're, when you're like 99% sure that you have the winning Powerball ticket. Now, I want you to think about this as far as fervent love. This is the same love that you can see this little girl has that, that Jeremiah said in 20, 20, verse 20, verse 9, he says, His word is in my heart like a fire that shut up in my bones. Listen, that's the best I can come up with right there, is that little girl running. That's how our reaction should be to get to people. Not get creepy and run them down, but that, but that, that should be what's inside of you. This should be how you feel when you get to see someone that's like, oh, this person needs to experience the love of God, you should get to them by any means necessary. Stop traffic, do whatever you got to do, but get to that person because God may not send that person back your way ever again. The word fervent in here means hot, burning, and glowing. I'm sure this little girl felt the same way when she looked at them numbers. She said, oh, Lord, think about the stuff I can get. What, I need to get somewhere and cash this in. We need to feel the same way when we're around someone because God will let you feel the pain of someone of a situation when you're around them. And all you have to do is pray and say, God, what do you want me to do? The next part of this scripture is very, is, uh, very personal because it uses the word slothful. And anybody who lives in my house knows I like sloths. Sloths are very unique animals. And I would love to have one if I ever get the Powerball ticket this little girl has in her hand. A sloth is a very slow-moving animal. Is it funny that the King James said, don't be slothful? Could, could, could it be that's why God made this animal and put that name sloth on the animal? That God didn't want us to move that slowly to people? There was a video that I had that showed a sloth crossing the street. And that sloth took his merry time to get across the street. Here it is. Look at, the, look at him go. Taking his time. He's going to get there, but he's getting there at his own pace and his own time. That is, this is not the definition of a fervent, burning, glowing spirit inside of somebody. He's going to get there. And there's times like this sloth will experience that you need, a, you need the hand of the Holy Spirit to help you. And it's coming soon to get to this situation. But this could be a picture of us trying to get to that person. And yes, you can say, Pastor Rob, at least I'm going. At least I'm getting there. But there should, there should be some enthusiasm, so like some excitement when this happens. And this, man hand, this man's hand will represent the Holy Spirit as he will help the sloth across the road. This is a great picture of God's love for us.
And the sloth gets there with help, flying in there with his hands up. So church, don't be slothful in, in zeal, but be fervent. Like, like, like Jeremiah said, his word is in my heart like a fire that shut up in my bones. He goes on to say, I'm weary of holding it. Indeed, I can't. Have you ever had that feeling where God said God's love was in you so strong and so powerful and you wanted to get to somebody and you held on to it and God said, you have to let this go. This is not for you. So we must be enthusiastic. Love must display tender affection and our love must be genuine. The last, the next to the last is our love must be patient, and I know we're not going to shout over patience. And one, I ain't never saw one video or been in one church service where a, where a saint is shouted when the Lord says, you must be patient. And if I ever come across that somebody that gets excited over the Lord, being, Lord telling you to be patient, I'm going to run with them too, just, just because I never saw it. But listen to this. It says, uh, it's, the verse says, rejoice in hope, but be patient in tribulation. Be consistent and in, uh, instant, consistent in prayer. Jesus knew how much God loved him. Let's go back to the Garden of Gethsemane for a moment. How much he, how much he loved him in this trying time. The prayer that God, that Jesus prayed at this time sustained him and reassured him that everything was going to be okay. God's love has the ability to let us know that everything is going to be okay. This, not my, this may not be a very theological message or, or word or however you want to call it, but the song that I thought about all week was, Jesus loves me, this I know. We can stop right now and dismiss with that one song and you should be encouraged. Jesus loves me, this I know, period. Because he does. Because he sent his son to die for, some, for people like us. The next thing is love must live in harmony. Now listen, that doesn't mean we're all going to get together and sing Kumbaya in a circle. That doesn't mean that everybody is going to get along with each other and say, oh, yes, I totally agree with you. The part of harmony sometimes is not agreeing, but, it, but to agree. And I think as, as, as Christians and as the body of Christ, living in harmony is important. Well, how, how does this show the love of God? Well, when we can put denominational rules aside and put away the, our titles and put away how long I've been this in the church and how long I've been Dr. So-and-so and how long I've been at Mount Calvary Baptist Church on the side of the road over there on duplex 10 years. I've done this and that. And we can put together all the things that we've done and come together in unity and in harmony and say, because of God's love, we are going to move this mountain and put together, put, a, put aside every single thing that we have for this one moment to show God's love. Instead, we allow who we are and our titles and what we've done to get in the way of God's moving. And guess what? On that day, I feel like God will ask us about that. Are we going to say because I was a member of Elk River, I didn't do this? Or because I was a member of First Church, I didn't do this? Or because I've been a member at the Tabernacle Baptist Church down at Bottom Creek Holler for 65 years? That don't matter. What matters is God's love and us, and us living in harmony and doing that. So 1 John 4.20 says, whoever claims to love God yet hates his brother or sister is a liar. That's not my words. That's God's words. So if you hate or dislike, it's, it's okay to dislike people. There's people I, Jesus, help me. There's people that do things that I don't like, but I'm still called to love them. There's, there, there, there's people that do things that don't agree with me, but God said, you're called to love them. The beauty of God's love is loving someone who is unlovable and loving someone who you cannot 
See yourself loving. Look at Ananias. Go back to that story for a moment. Paul was an unlovable person until God got a hold of him. So for whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. I, listen, when I, when I think about this, I think about the churches in the early 20s and 30s that, that, that would get up and they would worship God and they would sing about Jesus, but yet you couldn't worship with your brother because they were black. I have done a, a several month study on that. It's just amazing how they would, write, they would write songs, but yet you can't worship besides your brother because they're black, but you're singing how great thou art. That's not harmony. That's, that's, the, that's Satan sowing discord between people. One day we will see God. One day we will see Jesus face to face. But until then, we are called to love our brothers and sisters. That's God's love. Listen to this quote. Harmony, ma harmony makes small things grow. The lack of it makes things decay. Unity and harmony will allow the body of... Body of uh, Christ to grow. So let me remind you again of these things. Our love must be genuine. Our love must display tender affection. Love must be enthusiastic. Remember the sloth. Our love must be patient. Our love must live in harmony. And to conclude, I want to leave you guys with a, a quote from, from Martin Luther King. And he said, we must discover the power of love, the redemptive power of love. And when we discover that, we will be able to make of this old world a new world. For love is the only way. Not our love. Not what we think love is. But what God says love is. The other part of that song was, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. We only know that because we have his word. We only know that, saints, because we've experienced that. So, it, being, being enthusiastic and using the sloth, yes, that was funny, but, but we should have a, a, a fervor and a passion for the, for the lost, because that's why we're here. When I think of the reason why I'm here, it's not to be Pastor Rob. It's not to be, a, to, 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 be a, to, to be a husband or a father. It is that in the essence, but it's to worship God. Because when we get there, all those things will be pushed aside. When we, we get to heaven one day and we witness the angels constantly giving him praise. When we get to heaven one day and we witness, we witness the apostles around the throne. We get to heaven and we witness the streets of gold and we get to see all of these things that God has promised because his word says, I'll go prepare a place for you. The preparation is still going on. Why? Because he hasn't went, he hasn't came and got us yet. So our father is preparing his house for his bride, for his people. And to that, I'm excited. That gets me up in the morning. That allows me to love and to long suffer with people as they long suffer with me because I know the outcome. I know one day we can put this old world behind us and we can go on. But until then, we're here. And as I was praying, I said, God, I said, God speak to me. Speak to me as you did throughout this whole sermon, God. And one day I was at work and I heard this very audible plane in my in my heart and I'm gonna read it twice I heard I heard God say we will only overcome when we love him and others like our eternity depends on it let's read it again we will only overcome when we love him and others like our eternity depends on it you see what God puts important what God puts important him and them, and then us.
So saints, as we wrap this up, those who are sitting at home who, who feel like that, that God has left, that feel that there's no hope, that even feel their faith sliding away from them, listen guys, it's not over. God is still on the throne. The angels are still worshiping him. We still have breath in our bodies. We still are able to live and move and have our being in God. So as we pray and dismiss those at home and those that are here, let's bow your heads for a moment. And at this moment, invite the king of kings into your heart and ask God, how do you want me to display your love? Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word and your grace. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to your people this morning. Lord, everything that we have and what we do is wrapped up in your love. Lord, we thank you, Lord, so much for all that you do. Lord, I pray that this moment, as our heads are bowed, that we just think about all the things, Lord, that you've done for us and how you've brought us through uh, tribulations and that you will continue to do that. That you're the God of change, that your love is so reckless, Lord, that it will chase us down. It will find us. Lord, your love is so powerful that it finds us in the most uh, awful situations. It finds us in our sins and it meets us where we are. And then you tell us you love us. And then you remind us of what you've done and then what your future plans are for us. Lord, I feel as a body of Christ, we need to hear that this morning. That there's someone out there, Lord, that needs to hear that, you, that you're still on the throne, that you're still holding our hands, and that there's an abundance of grace and love out there. We just have to move. His great, Lord, your grace was shown that day when you died on the cross for us. Even further, Lord, before the world was created, you had us on your mind. So, Lord, as we dismiss and go out into the world, pray, I pray that we show enthusiasm, that we live in harmony. And that we chase down others the same way your love chases us. Lord, thank you for the still quietness in this building. In that quietness, Lord, speak to our hearts and allow that to erupt in, in the mode of change. As we end this prayer, God, I, I pray for our pastor. Let him continue to rest and enjoy himself. All the prayer requests, Lord, that, that we mentioned earlier, Bob Keys and his family, and the ones, Lord, that wasn't mentioned that are suffering too. Well, we give it to you. And we know that we must fight on and that we are called to pray for our brothers and sisters and be there for them despite of the feelings we have or what the world says. Lord, we thank you for who you are and what you do. Lord, may we honor you in all we do. In Jesus' name, amen. For God so loved the world, come on, that he gave his only son, and whosoever believes will not perish, they shall have eternal life. We believe in God. I shall hold to the cross. I shall hold to.
to God alone for his love. 